Welcome to Word of Life Ministry, where our motto is let the Word of God become alive in you. Led by a humble servant, Pastor Eugene Fondren. What do unity has to do with all in do? The all that ran down started where? At the highest point of Aaron's being. It's talking about the flow of unity. The flow of unity starts from the top. It's from the People don't know their place. So it creates an environment that's not unity. Join us today as Pastor Eugene Fungin take us on another exciting journey in the Word by the power of the Holy Ghost.
protect us and keep us. Amen. So we just thank God on today. We thank God for a whole another day. We thank God for a whole another year. Praise the Lord. And the message is titled A Praise for 2017. Amen. A Praise for 2017. Can you ask your neighbor, do you got a praise for this year? My God, my God, my God. I hear the old, old song, the, the song, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, gotta praise, gotta praise. My God, my God, my God. 2017, I gotta praise for this year. Are y'all hearing it? And there's another songwriter that said, put a praise on it. This is a year, y'all, that we need, to, we need to start off praising God. We need to start off magnifying God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of us been through some storms 2016. Are y'all hearing me? We've been through some storms that could have caused a shipwreck, but God has allowed us to weather the storm and come all in one piece. Ain't that right? My God, my God. And I got a praise for 2017. Can you tell your neighbor, I got a praise? For 2017. What are the musicians? I told y'all to stay at y'all. I told y'all to stay on y'all instrument. My God, my God, my God. I got my. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like giving God some praise. Here, this is 365 days. Isn't that right? 365 days God has kept me. Can y'all say that? Tell your neighbor, 365 days, God kept me. Are y'all hearing me? 365 days. Tell your neighbor, 365 days, God has provided for me. I never went hungry. Woo! My God, my God. I had clothes on my back. I had a roof on my head for 365 days. Hallelujah. Then the sun shut down. But I still had a roof on my head. Clothes on my back. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. I don't let it over the park country. But God is here. Because God has been so good to me. I don't know about you. I've been through some storms in 2016. 
close to giving up. And God said, you can make it another day. God said, you can make another day.
Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Ain't hearing me. Just because you ain't got a Cadillac Escalade or a leaking Continental, y'all ain't hearing me. But you coming in a putt putt. What they call it? Hoopty. Tell your neighbor that's a donkey. And because of the way you dress, you might not have no designer clothes on. The raiment of a king. What do y'all young people call them? Them uh, uh, off brands. What do y'all call them? Knockoffs. <laughs> you might be wearing a knockoff, and people don't respect you because of the way you dress. Y'all hear? She said, as long as you're clean and not wrinkled. My God, my God, my God. Let's, let's go. Saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. See, listen, 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 listen. Here these people, they, they, the Bible said that they praise God with a loud voice. And here the thing, people sometimes don't like the way you praise God. Sometimes church folks don't like the way you praise God. Y'all ain't here, man. But they saw 2,710 feet away. And they began to magnify and praise God that he was coming as a king. And they didn't like the fact that they were praising God. Y'all ain't here, man. Read what it said. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him. Are y'all hearing this? Master, rebuke thy disciples. Hey! They talking to the king and telling the king, put those followers in check. They making them too much noise. But tell your neighbor, I got to praise for 2017. I don't care how much noise I make up, but I'm going to give my praise. There ought to be a shout of praise right about now. Hallelujah. Hey! My God, my God. Don't let nobody tell you to stop praising God. Pharisees telling Jesus, you need to put your disciples in check. They need to shut up. People are going to tell you why you praising God. All the mess you've been in in 2016, all the scandals that you went through. Are y'all in here, man? But I might be talking about somebody in here. Hallelujah. They might look at you and say, you don't have a reason to praise God. All the stuff, and all the mess, all the drama. But there's a reason, hallelujah, to give God some praise. Because it's another day, hallelujah. A new day, a brand new day, a brand new year. And I'm going to start it off by giving God some praise, hallelujah. Hey, my God, my God. Hey. Pharisee said, you need to get them. You need to quiet them down. You need to shut them up. Uh huh. Hold a minute. Listen. When the Bible says saying bless, it is to speak well of, to bless, to praise. So when they were yelling, bless be the king, they were praising God. They were speaking well of Christ. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Go ahead. What does it say? Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Uh huh. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, Rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Everybody said immediately. Immediately. Cry out. Cry out. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. It was doing all that jumping. It was doing all that shouting. And they said, look, they just doing too much over there. You know, don't y'all young people say that? You just doing too much. Yeah. They just doing the most. They're doing too much. Some of them were sitting right in the church and looking and saying, what they over there shouting for? But Jesus said, if they ain't shouting, if they, everybody said, hold their peace. What he mean by, if these should hold their peace? Hold their peace. Have y'all thought about that? Hold their peace. See, those that are filled with the Holy Ghost, know that sometimes when the Holy Ghost comes and, and, and when, when you, you get this, this burst, of excitement, of joy. Uh, I might not be talking to a saint by the church. Maybe y'all haven't felt that way. And sometimes this, this burst 
of excitement come, you just throw your hands up and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it's difficult to hold your peace. If you want to sit down, but when the music gets going, and when you think about the goodness of Jesus, and all, hallelujah, and all that he done for you, hallelujah, you can't hold it. You can't sit there. You can't sit nothing. You, hallelujah, you just got to throw your head back and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes, it might come in an unopportune situation. And sometimes it's difficult to hold your peace. Sometimes you don't might not want to make a move, but you're saying it, mumbling through your mouth. Lord, I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Look what you said. I tell you that if these should hold their peace, if you hold your peace, if you don't speak out, when the Holy Ghost unction you, the Bible said that what? The stones. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to rock. Cry out for me. My God, my God, my God. Immediately. Cry out. In many cases, the devil robs us of our praise. He tells us, you don't have a right to thank God. Look at all the stuff that you've been through. Look at your situation. Your life is in a mess. Are y'all hearing me? Your finances all twisted up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And they said, the devil said, you don't have a right to praise God. You don't have no reason. But somebody ought to say the devil is a lie. God gave me life, health, and strength, and caused me to see another year and tell your neighbor, that's enough. That's enough. Oh my God. That's enough. When I think about the people that are disabled and can't do for themselves, yeah. hallelujah. Got a hand but can't raise it. Got legs but can't shout. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But here we got hands that we can clap and applaud God with. We got a mouth we can open up and give God the praise with. We got legs we can stand up on our feet and give God a dance. Hallelujah. You got a right to praise God in 2017. My God, my God, my God. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Wait a minute. Don't this seem kind of out of place? Think about that for a minute. Jesus coming to the city in the distance again was 2,710 feet away. People are rejoicing, giving God some praise. The Pharisees telling him, man, you, you, need to get, you need to take care of that. Quiet about And Jesus seeing all this praising and magnifying and worshiping going on, and he put them Pharisees in jail. But then he turns around, the Bible says that Jesus began to what? Cry. He's crying. He's weeping. People are rejoicing, but he's weeping. Out of all this joy and excitement, you would wonder why in the world is Jesus crying for Jerusalem. I can kind of relate to that. You know, because I, I was thinking sometimes how we treat God. Tell you that we got to do better. We'll treat our employment better than our spiritual employment. See, here's the thing, here's the thing. What we fail to realize is that we go to our jobs and our jobs to us that we have to be there at 7 o'clock. And we there at 17, sometimes we get rolled up. Is that right? Because of the judgment of the or the disciplinary action of our targeting, it causes us to make sure we're there, everybody said, on time. You're right. But I wonder if we stand back and take a look at the two and ask ourselves, are we doing God justice? This is from the pulpit to the devil. When I said we got to do better, we got to do better. We've been fired. Probably the fifth day of the 365 days. Because we would have got our targets and our warnings and we've been fired. We got to treat God better than this, y'all. Listen, that job might be providing you to pay your bills. But you forget about the spiritualness part of it. Because if you didn't have your health and strength, you wouldn't have your job. It's not you pump pushing the clock that provides the meal on your table. Are y'all hearing me? It's the knowledge and wisdom that God has granted you and the strength and health, health to 
do what you do to punch the clock. But the problem is, it's a reward problem. See, every week or every two weeks or every month, we know we have a reward for punching the clock. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody, y'all. But what about our spiritual reward? Because the Bible said, no man knows the day, nor the hour. Tell you that, but I got to praise. In 2017, 2017. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. <laughs> my God, my God. Amen. Come on, y'all. Jesus, weeping. In all this commotion, all this excitement, all this joy that people have in praising God, and Jesus was weeping because, see, he knew what they didn't know. And you know what he knew? He knew that that excitement, that joy, was only the last for season. His weeping and what he looked at was what he had to do for them. They was rejoicing. They was excited. But Jesus already knew the same very ones rejoicing are going to be saying crucified. His weakness came from, I'm going to have to suffer many things. I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for you. I'm going to have to go through this cross. I'm going to have to be crucified. Are y'all hearing me? In all this excitement, in all this joy, in all this that's going on, Jesus is weeping. Y'all think about that for a minute. Because the service can be so high. But Jesus already know what some of you are going to do when you leave the service. A king is coming. He don't look like what he is. He's not riding on what a king of Tyre would ride on, but he's a king. And the people realized that he was a king. And they was rejoicing. Jesus was weeping because he knew he had to die for them. He knew that they were going to yell, crucify him. He knew that they was going to turn on him. Think about that for a minute. How would you feel if you meet somebody and that's your close friend, as some said, your bestie. And you know that they're supposed to have your back. But you have the ability to look down the tunnel of time. And you know that they are going to turn their back on you. And you know that they're going to seek to kill you. But they're your bestie. They was one that was rooting for you. They was one that was cheering in your corner. But you already know what they were going to do through the tunnel of time. Now you know why he's weeping. Because they're rejoicing. It's only the last for season. My God, my God. I hope y'all see that picture. I hope y'all see it. Listen what it said. Read. We're in Luke 19 and 42. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this day, Hold. thy day. Hold. Ask yourself, why is Jesus weeping? And listen what he said. He said four words. If thou hast known. He said, if you only know, if you can only see what I see. Even though, at least in this thy day, uh -huh. the things which belong to thy peace. Oh! See, y'all didn't get that. See, right now, Jesus understood that God was mad at them. And the only way that they can have peace, tell you later, he had to die. And he said, if you only know, yeah, they rejoice. Yeah, they're like, they're glad to see me. But if you only know what they're going to do to me and what I have to do in order for them to have peace with God. If you only know. See, that's the reason why we have a praise, y'all. That's the reason why we should be thankful for what Christ has done for us. He knew that he had to go to the cross. He knew it was going to take that for us to have peace with God. And if it wasn't for that, see, that's what I'm saying. You got to understand. And he was weeping because he knew he had to die for them to have peace. Then if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. So here, Christ has been preaching salvation, and they don't even see it. And what he's saying is, I love you so much, but I know you're going to reject me. You're going to condemn me, and you're going to reduce me, crucify me. For the day shall come upon thee, uh -huh. and thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side. So Jesus here is talking about something. He was predicting something was going to happen. And, and it happened, and, and, and Joseph, uh, Joseph gives this account um, of how when they built the wall around Jerusalem and dig the trench around it, uh, in history, and what happened was they couldn't come out, and they couldn't get resources in. So they suffered. But listen, read what the 44th verse says. And shall lay thee even with the ground, uh -huh. and thy children within thee, and they shall not be in thee. One stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Hold on. Now did y'all get that? This was the time that God was visiting them. God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. Jesus was the son of God, reference to the flesh. 
He had a human spirit, and he had God's spirit. But here's the thing, he was 100% man and 100% God. 1 Timothy 3 and 16 tell you that. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. This was a time that God himself was visiting his people. And he was saying that because of what they're doing now, because they have breached this whole trust and caused sin to come, now in order for them to have peace, this son, this fleshly tabernacle that I'm in, he got that. In order for their peace. See, I don't know about you, but I got a right to give God some praise for what He done. A God Almighty coming down to see about His people. And they didn't know the time of His visitation. My God, my God. That's the reason why I said you need to be on time. Because when God visits, you need to be in the place. Thank you for tuning into Word of Life Radio Broadcast. Our service time is as follows. Wednesday Bible study, 7 o'clock p.m. Sunday school is at 9.30 a.m. Worship service is at 11 o'clock a.m. The church address is 343 Pettlerfield Road, Taylor, Mississippi. We'd love to see you there.